Hey y'all, welcome back to Native to Medicine with X, that's me, where I come to you weekly with videos about my pre-med journey turned med school journey and all the other things that I'm learning while I'm here. There are a few of you who've been hitting me up via email and my DMs on Instagram and in some of the comments asking, when do you actually sit for the MCAT? Like, how do you know that you're ready? Well, I can't say that anybody truly feels ready. Okay, let me take that back. I can't tell you that I feel ready, because I didn't. But let me give you this little brief timeline. Here are some steps that you can take to get yourself to be as ready as possible. Number one, take practice tests. It can be scary, it can be daunting, intimidating. I know, enter any adjective that doesn't really make you feel good, but peaks that or spikes that anxiety. That's what practice tests can do, but we learn. We learn from the mistakes that we make. Whenever you're taking a practice exam, you want to simulate on real test-like conditions. That means do not Google anything. Do not use your browser. Don't have your phone out. Like if you take tests with earplugs in, put those earplugs in. Pack the lunch that you're going to actually eat and all the snacks you're gonna eat on exam day. Like we want to simulate testing conditions as best as possible. And this also means that after the exam is over, I mean, I know in a real test you can't like immediately look at it. So like give yourself a break, walk away from the computer and then start analyzing your exam that day. For me, I will analyze the following day. But what analysis looks like is going to a question, highlighting the clue words, what exactly are they asking me? And how did I answer it? Did I answer the question? Yes or no? If yes, did I answer the question and got it right because I knew what they were talking about or was it a lucky guess? So now we're getting to the root of things. Don't just count up, oh, I got 30 right out of 59, so I'm only gonna check the other 29 questions. That's not going to help you because the questions may not always be the same, but if you understand the concept, it doesn't matter how they present the content because you know it now. So you wanna go through through step by step, do I know it? Okay, what are my learning issues? And if you're a learner who can go back to a book and read and find the answer and it stick with you, go for it. Me, I am a visual learner, so I need videos. And then from videos, I will make an Anki flashcard. I'll put those flashcards in and I would do them all that night and then sporadically I would keep doing them because there were just different content areas that I had problems with, right? So doing those practice tests, doing that question analysis and creating a schedule. All these things are essential to your growth, your success, and your progress. When you're getting close to your exam, I'd want to say like maybe four weeks out, you want to be scoring within, you know, your confidence. You shouldn't take a test no more than seven days before your exam because you don't want to be burned out. Like this is a seven and a half hour exam. That's too much to be doing that close to your exam. And yeah, I was burned out. I was tired. I was exhausted. But the most important thing is to take it when your practice tests, like you're consistently scoring within that same range of where your goal, your target score is so enhance your strengths like don't even worry about your weaknesses like things are going to work out exactly how they're supposed to work out so I'm sorry if this isn't really what y'all were looking for or thinking that like oh there's some special secret there's the secret sauce that is just going to tell you that you're ready I don't think most people feel ready when they sit for the MCAT, but it is how good are your test taking strategies and how good are you able to adjust under pressure with those test taking skills? Because if you know how to take a test, I swear I am you, <laughs> as I am still working on that. But if you know how to legitimately sit for a test and can answer the question that they are asking, or if you understand what they're asking, that is half of the battle. Because a lot of things are true in the answer choices, but they do not answer the question at hand. So three weeks before I took the MCAT, my friend was like, I don't mean this in a mean way, I don't mean this in a harsh way, but you're not getting it. So I think you benefit from a tutor. Where mother and father get a tutor for you. I'm like, my parents want the best for me, they're rooting for me, all these things, like they'll do anything that they can to help me get into medical school. She reached out to her Facebook class group and asked, is anyone proficient or is anyone an MCAT tutor? A girl reached back out to her, she sent me the contact information, whatever. She talks to me, assesses my situation, and was basically like, I think you need to take the next two days off and then we're gonna hit the ground running. Also, I'd highly advise you to push your test back by two weeks. Y'all, why, why? Why do I have to push this test back again? This is already the fifth time, like, yo. 
And her only thing was, do you want this to be your last time taking the test <laughs> or do you want to take it again? And I was like, say no more. And you don't have to convince me of anything else because I'm not taking this test anymore because just, no, we're not doing it. So I pushed the test back two weeks. She comes in with a strict schedule. She asked me how I had been studying. I'm like, you know, I study a little bit of this, a little bit of that every single day. She's like, no, you need some order to your days. Do you use flashcards? I'm like, I mean, no. How are you retaining all this information? How are you spacing out the information that you are studying? Girl, I don't know, it's up there somewhere, like, I'm not really sure. So then she proceeds to say, okay, fine, I'ma send you this deck, Mal Down, Anki deck from Reddit, download this, I'ma teach you how to use Anki, bet, okay. And then each day was something I focused on. So I did cars every single day because that was my lowest section, which by the end it never really moved. She's weird because I've been an avid reader my entire life. Yet that comprehension on those exams wasn't my thing, but I hope it's yours. And so like Mondays could be general chemistry, Tuesdays could be biology, Wednesdays, psych or social, Thursdays, organic chemistry, Fridays I would dedicate to reviewing because on Saturdays, then I would take a practice test. So that y'all, that is going to be the true barometer, the true marker, the true method to how you see if you're really ready to sit for the MCAT. I wanted to score somewhere between 500 and 503. Honestly, the closer I got to the test, I was like, y'all, <laughs> just let me break 500. That's all I want, that's all I want. The program I was in, I only needed a 495, but I'm like, you know, the sky is the limit. The world is my oyster. No need to just shoot for that 495, so I get that one acceptance. We want multiple, and by multiple, I wanted to come back home. So I'm just like, all right. These practice tests, I did them every single Saturday leading up to my exam. So all of my test scores were within my confidence band of, I think it's 499 to 503. I was going every single test was in that range, except the test that I took, I believe my MCAT was on a Friday and I took a test on a Sunday. It was either Sunday or Monday, but I really want to say it was on a Sunday instead of Saturday because I didn't think I was ready for the Saturday. But now the closer you get into the exam, the less work you should be doing. <sighs> I didn't listen to my tutor when it came to that part because I was like, I gotta get this last test in. And she told me, if you can't take it on Saturday, just don't take a test and just do, you know, question banks, you know, all the AAMC question packets and all those things. But I'm like, no, I wanna stick to my schedule of taking this test. But girl, you gonna stick to your schedule of taking it on a Saturday, so now, like you real loosey-goosey with what you wanna stick to. Not cool, I got a 496 on that test. I vividly remember calling my old roommate, Catherine, and crying my eyes out. Girl, I'm never gonna be a doctor. I'm not going to get into medical school because there's no way a school is going to accept me from scoring a 493 to 496. Like, this is not going to happen. She listened to me. She let me vent. And then she's just like, I think you're tired. You might be burned out. And in that moment, she was true. Like, she was right. But also, if I'm tired and I'm burned out and then my test is in five days, to be honest, I shouldn't have sat for that exam. I should have pushed the exam once again. But I'm thinking it's already the end of August. If I don't submit my application now, mind you, this was 2020, so COVID times, all this was technically like not early, but it wasn't a late test day because so many test dates had gotten canceled due to COVID and we didn't know like what was going on. Now we still don't know what's going on. But I'm like, if I push it again, then I'm gonna have to push my application and apply for cycle 2022 instead of 2021. Like I'm just gonna take this test and get it over with. That was dumb. That was not the best thing to do. Because let's say I go in, I take that test and I get a 494. Now I can't even apply to Ross and Franklin's program through PMP. Like, because I didn't get the 495 that I needed to go there. Or now I have not really shown any improvement on the MCAT all because I want to stick to a timeline. And so I know like a lot of you, your tests are coming up and your people are telling you, you know, you want to take a test by the end of May because that constitutes as an early application. The earliest or the best application that you're submitting is the application that is complete, meaning that you put your best foot forward. It means nothing to submit an application if your number's not there. Like for me, a 501 was great. I was so happy. It, listen, I first took that MCAT in January of 2015, the old MCAT, and I got a 13, which translates to like a 482, 483. So over the lifespan of me taking MCAT exams, I improved by 19 points. Speaks values. 
speaks volumes. So the thing is, we have to stop rushing the process. If I had to apply for Cycle 2022, that would have been fine. I could have taken the test in September and that would have been the earliest of early dates for the following cycle. Had my whole application was already edited, person statement was submitted, I already had all my letter recommendations, would have been team no stress. But I think we place a lot more stress on ourselves than we need to because we're trying to beat a timeline. And I can't believe that by 2020, I still hadn't gotten that through my head. I thought I was going to graduate from college, go immediately to medical school and be an attendant by now. But it didn't happen and that's okay. Like you are going to be exactly where you need to be. So the best advice I can give you, don't rush it. Pay attention to those practice tests and the AAMC practice tests are going to be the best marker. So I always started with their diagnostic as the first test I took. And then I would do like Princeton or Kaplan in between, I guess like now there's Blueprint as well. And then as I got closer to my exam, those last four AAMC, those are the last four tests that I'm about to take because Y'all are the test writers. I need to get in your head and do all of the question pack or the section banks because they repeat questions, y'all. And the more that you do and you actually analyze the questions that you got correct and wrong, the more you're getting inside of the test writer's head. And I'm telling you, you're gonna do better than the 501 that I got. And you're gonna get more interviews than I got. You're gonna get more acceptances than I got. But just remember, you can only go to one school at the end of the day. My advice to all of y'all is take your time. If you need a tutor, get a tutor. If you need help, ask for help. If you don't know where to start, email me. I will help you to the best of my ability. But that's all I got for you today. If you got any questions, please write them down below in the comments. If you haven't done so already, click subscribe. Like this post, please. Share it with other people and let me know what else, what other material, what other information, what other topics you want to see from me. Um, but yeah, that's how I get back to studying. I got a set coming up. <laughs> all right, see y'all next week. Bye.